Hi, and welcome to Thai TV. I'm Daniel Bergman from Fly Dressing, and today uh, we're gonna tie uh, one of my favorite style of flies. Uh, this is a big uh, articulated uh, trout streamer, uh, but of course you can probably use it for most predatory fish, but I tie this with trout in mind. Uh, and the, the whole purpose of the fly is actually to have a bulky head and a really nice swimming tail. And that was the two things um, I was aiming for. Uh, the bulky head gives uh, a lot of vibrations to the light tail and uh, the wave tail here in the back, so it swims really beautifully. Uh, and I can say everything more or less in between is uh, just to make it sort of looking decent. So there's a lot of marabou and uh, uh, some polar reflector flash chenille. Uh, either, either than that is just a big head and a tail. <laughs> and this, this uh, pattern has proven successful for me uh, for the especially last year. Um, both in sort of tan colors like this one and also black versions during night fishing has been working really well. Okay, uh, two hooks. Uh, I start with quite a small hook and quite a light hook. Uh, this is the Partridge Attitude Streamer size 2. Um, I want a lot of movement in the rear of this fly. So I don't want to use too, too heavy hooks. Uh, start with tying in the thread and I'm using a UTC 140. Color is doesn't really matter. Uh, it's quite a thick thread. It's really nice for for big streamer flies. Okay I wind the thread all the way to the back and then we're gonna uh, do sort of a little loop in the back here just to have something to attach the wave tail to. Of course you can also put on a wiggle tail. <laughs> That's an option but um, I designed this fly with the wave tail in, in mind and it's been working really well with that tail. Okay, I take a sort of, I think this is four centimeters long or something. Uh, doesn't need to be long. I fold it and then I take a articulation bead here. Uh, in this case it's yellow. And I thread the pearl, or the bead, onto the wire. Cooperate. There we go. And I leave sort of... Uh, loop in the back here which is sort of the same size as the actual bead. Just lay it on top of the hook shank and tie it in. And you want this to be sort of a natural uh, angle from from the hook, uh, hook shank so it continues straight backwards. And I do some careful turns with the thread over the wire because it can be quite sharp here so I don't want to cut my thread. And then I put some more pressure on just to secure it. Uh, you don't get much tension on this anyway so it's not so necessary to glue it or anything. It never comes off anyway. Okay for body I'm just going to use this uh, Polar Reflector Flash Chenille in yellow. Awesome color. I'm going to try to find <laughs> the end of this. It's quite a lot in this bag. We have a... I want the right end. Okay, that's it. I want, the, want to start with the end where the fibers are pointing sort of downwards when you're holding it like this. And I tie it in. I'm 
go forward with the tying thread and start winding this forward uh, doesn't need to be uh, tight turns uh, well maybe I could try to look make it look a little bit good <laughs> there we go And while winding it forward, I try to just tease the fibers backwards all the time. Not to tangle so much of the fibers. And then I leave like two millimeters up front here and tie the chenille in. And cut off the excess by using the whole rope here of, <laughs> of material I'm not wasting anything so it's a good tip instead of pre-cutting a small piece you, you always get some excess that you have to throw away okay um, now we're gonna do sort of a over wing and an under wing and I'm doing that of, of uh, strung marabou this one is cream colored, which is a nice sort of belly color for uh, fish imitations. And now I'm looking for, for feathers that are quite fluffy. <laughs> that one is good. Nice plume. Uh, and I want one that is a little bit less dense for the underside. That's good. No, it's actually not. Try again. I don't want the... Like this really slick fibers. I want the ones with some fluff on them. <laughs> I think that is going to be excellent. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, I start with the underside. And then I sort of divide it and take the stem of the fib of the marabou plume and just rip it off turn the hook upside down try to fold everything backwards and I tie it in on the underside with a couple of loose turns one two and put some tension on the thread. And now I can adjust the length. Oh, I got it right from the beginning. <laughs> so I don't need to adjust it anymore. <laughs> okay, on to the next one. Now I don't have to take away the stem since I don't have any hook on the upper side of the fly. And I want this to be a little bit longer uh, and the feather on the underside, two loose turns, and tension. Perfect. Now I'm gonna try to unveil my hook eye. See if I can find it in here somewhere. Should be somewhere. A lot of feathers. There we go. I found it. Try to cut off the ex excess as close as, as close to the hook eye as possible. Something like that. Uh, just cut some of the fuss around here. Okay. Do a little head here. And some super glue. Try to keep the fibers away from the glue. Then just a quick whip finish. There we go. Done! 
big fluffy ball of marabou and some glitter. Okay, that's the tail part of the fly to start with. And now uh, we move on to a bigger hook. Uh, this is a 2-0 uh, of the same uh, kind of hook, uh, the Attitude Streamer from Partridge. Great hook. Get it in there. And uh, by the way, uh, we usually get uh, quite a lot of questions on what kind of vice uh, we're using. And this is the uh, Perichon. Uh, I think it's called just Swiss vice. Yeah, Swiss vice. He's Mark is from Switzerland and the vice is made in Switzerland, so Swiss vice. Easy. Okay, uh, I attach my thread on the front of the hook. Snip off the excess. And then I give the bobbin a little spin uh, just to uh, sort of tighten up the thread. I don't want it to be lying completely flat on the hook shank right now. So now it's twisted, it's more like a rope. And then I wind it backwards in even turns uh, all the way to just on top of the barb of the hook. There we go. And then I can leave it and let it spin and flatten up. Uh, what I get with this is something for the wire uh, to really grip onto. Okay, now I'm going to prepare one more piece of wire. Uh, this is for the articulation joint. Uh, try to measure it in. That should be sort of enough. We'll cut it and see how long it is. I don't know, eight, nine centimeters. I take the rear of the fly, thread it onto the wire. Put the buttons even. And thread on a couple of articulation beads. Two is enough for this. And I leave a loop in the same size of one bead in the back there. Now, when I tie this in, I want the upper one, the upper end of the wire uh, to come down on my side. And that's going to make uh, that the angle of the loop back here is correct. Now both uh, hook shanks are pointing downwards. That's the way I want it. Uh, just to keel the fly better. Okay, now I sort of give it a little spin again. After I have secured the the wire. Then I start winding it forward in even hard turns. And when I reach the two points here, let it hang, spin it a little bit so I unwind it, flattens out the thread. And when I'm winding over the buttons here, I want to do it real careful carefully with a flat thread. Otherwise uh, the chance is really big that I'm going to just cut the thread. Okay, now we're gonna try to secure the whole package. Uh, and then I start winding backwards and I wind halfway backwards. Hard turns and I wind forward again. 
And then I wind all the way back, hard turns, put some pressure on the thread, halfway and back. That is usually enough to put some real... I've never succeeded in uh, pulling these two apart after I've done this. If you want to be sort of double sure that everything holds up, put some glue on there. And that's never coming undone. Okay, body, same as on the rear hook. leave that hanging um, tie in the chenille here and move forward with my tying thread and I start winding this uh, not super tight turns this is more or less uh, just to add some bling to the fly Now I want to leave at least, I would say, one centimeter or 12 millimeters up in front here uh, to get room for uh, the wing and also the really big bulky head. Okay, start with uh, the belly of the fly. I'm going for the cream colored marabou again and now this time I want f feathers with really long fibers. Uh, try to find a feather with sort of even fiber length. This one was good for the underside. And I actually saw that the stem in the middle was off which was Perfect. <laughs> Place it on the underside. Pinch it together. A couple of turns. Secure it. Uh, measure it. That's a little bit too long. And I pull it. That's better. I want the. Um, come on. I want the length to be sort of beyond just over where the uh, rear of the fly starts. There we go. And then I tie it down a little bit harder. And trim off the excess there. Okay, uh, I start with a similar feather for the top. I want long fibers. This should be good. That's good. Tie that in on top. Couple of hard turns. And I'm swapping uh, to a sort of yellow olive marabou to uh, give it a little bit darker back. Let's see if I can find a feather with some nice long fibers. Here we have something. And if you see that the fibers are sort of clumped together a little bit, you can always brush it. That usually happens when, when they're dyeing the feathers. Okay, I place that on top. I want it sort of the same length as the feather underneath. Good. 
spread it top it's pretty nice just to give it a little bit of extra touch I take one of these um, barred uh, marabou feathers from hairline gives it a nice back take a fiber with uh, or a feather with really long fibers and this can sometimes be a little bit clumped uh, clumped together too because of the dyeing process so I gave it a good brush and then it's like new or the way I want it I pinch a bunch of fibers between my fingers and cut them off that's like three centimeters of fiber clump it together try to get hold of all of them I just place them on top and tie it in The funny thing with marabou is <laughs> it looks like a lot of material but it's so fluffy and holds so much air that when it comes into the water it sort of collapses and pulsates really beautifully. Okay, I tie, tie down the buttons and now we're gonna start building the head of the fly. And for that, uh, I'm using Predator Dubbing. Uh, this is an olive brown color. Can't really remember the name of it right now. Uh, sort of a golden olive color, I would say. This is the total impression of it. So it's brown and olive and some glitter mixed. Take a big clump. Uh, Rip it apart, sort of make it a little bit shorter. And place the two clumps together. Pull them apart and lay them together a couple of times just to make a nice taper. And I place the clump on top and tie it in on the middle. Like so. Okay, now we're gonna turn the whole spectacle and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Rip it apart. If you take too many fibers, it can be uh, quite hard to rip it apart. Uh, then you either need to spend some more time at the gym or uh, take a smaller clump. But that's a, it's a good way to sort of uh, alternate the length of the fibers and build up a nice taper to a head. Okay, the clamp on the underside is tied in. Now I want to fold the whole thing backwards. So I fold the upper part, go in between with the thread, between the two clumps, and move forward a little bit. And now you can actually leave some space in between here because the dubbing is filling up the uh, gap so good so you don't have to sort of pack it there is no no point in doing that well that was probably enough for both sides split it in two rip it apart and sort of stack it a little bit Same thing as before. I'm 
this way uh, we're building up really voluminous head that is gonna give a great kick to that tail part of the fly and the funny thing is it even though it looks really big <laughs> and it's quite a lot of material it's not hard to cast actually it sheds water quite well <laughs> marabou is sort of special even though uh, it looks really big <laughs> both in the water and and in the air it doesn't really soak up that much water and everything else is synthetic okay uh, i'm just gonna take one last small clump uh, in front of here um, of course if you want to you can sort of mix all the colors up and get nice effects but well this is already a really nice mix of colors so I leave it at this make up the head ah, come on to the final final little clump yep there we go same procedure fold it backwards go in with the thread in front tight and tie in front of the clump don't tie it down because you want the head to be sort of as bulky as possible here okay done and done let's finish it up some zap on the thread a couple of turns A whip finish. There we go. Let's do a half hitch too. Done. Okay, now I'm gonna give the head air a good brushing. And also the marabou underneath. Untangle a little bit of the mess. <laughs> looks like something from the Muppet show or something <laughs> okay uh, all flies uh, need eyes I'm going for 9 millimeter uh, fluorescent green and white pretty cool zombie eyes Put some super glue on the back of the eye and place the eye just behind the hook eye. Give it a little push. You don't want to squeeze it down <laughs> because if that can actually sort of tighten up the head and make it narrow instead of of uh, the wide profile that I want. Some glue. And repeat. Now you should really have a look at this from the front. That is quite a big profile. It's really fat in the front and it sort of tapers down backwards. And this is what gim gives the thing the awesome swimming action. OK, 
Okay. Right. Well, since I got some permanent markers here on the table, I'm just gonna fool around a little bit. Stripe it up. Like so. Probably does nothing, but looks quite cool. Okay, that's the fly. Now I'm going to do the tail. Medium uh, white skin version of the uh, tail. Of course you can alternate colors here. Uh, you can go for a fluorescent one if you want. Uh, something with a little bit more sting to it. This is more or less, this is more uh, to imitate like a baby trout or something. Uh, so I don't want it to be fluorescent orange. I take a fast touch uh, from the Bauer, Bauer range, small one. Uh, and I put it with the sort of the loop or what to say <laughs> in the back here, the one that is closed uh, pointing outwards. I attach the thread in here, cut off the excess, then I take the tail and lay it on top here, pinch it down with my left thumb and give it a couple of solid turns of threads here in the back. That's enough, doesn't take much to really attach it. And then I whip finish it. Done. And just to make sure it stays there, a little bit of glue. Be careful not to get too much glue on the tail because it's gonna stiffen it up quite a lot. Okay, now it needs to dry a little bit before we can attach it, but let's see. That's enough. I'm impatient. Then I just snap it on here, twist it on, and we're done. Pretty cool looking fly. Works really, really well in different colors. Uh, as I said, I can definitely recommend a black one for night fishing. Uh, but this is uh, this color and the tan one has been working really well uh, during daytime with a trout hunt for for uh, smaller fish. So uh, would love to hear it from you guys uh, where you would fish uh, this kind of fly and also where you're from. Um, where you're fishing um, and we're actually gonna give away this fly uh, so drop a comment in the commentary box uh, on why you should have it and uh, what you're going to fish with it uh, so you'll have a chance to win it okay thanks for watching take care